Welcome back to another fun-filled, exciting episode of Austin Inside Out. I'm here at one of the coolest new places in town, Pinball's Arcade. Pinball's is a really big, old-school arcade with over a hundred pinball machines. And that's a lot of pinball games. They also have an awesome array of classic video games. Games like Pac-Man, Space Invaders, and Cubert. All in all, there's about 300 games in this palace of pinball. Uh, we started out uh, kind of as a collection or as a family uh, hobby. I uh, started collecting one, two, three, and uh, uh, my obsessive compulsiveness took over, and pretty soon I had a few dozen of these creatures. And then we decided as a family, uh, why not start a small arcade? And we started looking around for a couple thousand square foot arcade. And then obviously we don't do anything very small. That turned into a 13,000 square foot arcade here in the center of town. This place is so much fun. Pinballs is kind of like a museum, except at this museum, you can play the exhibits. Pinball's been around for, uh, I guess, probably close to 100 years or, or, or even longer. It started with pachinko machines and then went into uh, games that actually have flippers on the bottom and then more of a, a game of uh, skill versus a game of chance. And uh, modern pinball is probably more in the, I guess, the 50s and 60s to modern day. Machines have gotten quite much faster these days. Uh, the speed of the machine, the functions, the depth of gameplay to the machine. And in the, probably the last you know, 20, 30 years, it's really accelerated to the point where you have uh, very highly complex pinball machines. Pinballs is like a living pop culture time machine where things that were never meant to last get a chance to live again. Um, people don't understand, they, sometimes you'll, you'll see a review and go, oh my gosh, they charge 50 cents a game, why don't they charge a quarter? And we shake our heads and go, you know, we're losing money at 50 cents. It, it's very difficult to maintain them. It's like driving around 30-year-old cars every day and constantly having them on. Um, constant parts repairs, labor, we have a staff of eight technicians, uh, eight, eight full-time equivalent technicians to repair all our games, and we have games on route too. So um, they do cost a lot of money, uh, that's why we have things like parties and events that are, you know, we rent out the arcade, we have... Uh, machines on locations that we're adding revenue to it. We have repair business. So we have all these ancillary revenue streams to help boost up the money so we can keep these games operating on the floor and try to keep our prices reasonable compared to our competition. Pinballs is more than just pinball machines. They've got great old arcade games, stuff like Miss Pac-Man, driving games. They have those games you can play where you get the tickets and you can change the tickets in for cool prizes. Yeah, we have ticket machines. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, the newer arcades tend to go very heavy on ticket machines. We've got maybe a 25 or 30 percent mix. Um, they're pretty generous on tickets they give. Uh, you put tokens in and either they're just pure coin rollers or they are games of, of skill and you can win a certain number of tickets back from them and then redeem them in for prizes. And we really try to get uh, cool and eclectic on our prize suite, not only for kids but for adults because we get both a kid crowd during the day and at night we have an adult crowd, so we have a pretty widely stocked redemption counter as well. One of my favorite things about these old pinball games is the art on the machines themselves. Some of it's amazing art, especially like the psychedelic ones from the 70s. Well, we have uh, some very strange and rare pinball machines. Uh, one's called Bonsai Run, where it has a play field both on the bottom and on the top, a vertical play field. Um, we have uh, uh, some of the more rare earlier games, uh, maybe some of the like Captain Fantastic and an EM type approach. Um, and then we have some very hard games to get, like the Circus Voltaire's Medieval Madness. But that's one of the benefits of coming here is that you can play 48 of the top 50 games, some of these games that are worth ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, and still come on the floor and play them for token supporters. The games may seem old-fashioned, but in a way they're thoroughly modern. A melding of technology, art, and entertainment. Pinball is interactive, but it's not a simulation. Pinball is real. We have a 1965 pinball uh, called Hula Hula, and it's really neat because the side is cut out and the back is cut out, so you can actually watch the relays fire as you play the game. I, I'm, I believe that everything goes in cycles, and I think that we're in this end of a cycle of the Xbox 360s and the Playstations and this media overload that kids love to sit on the couch and, and, and with this lack of social experience, and I think that our culture is looking to get back to that retro feel, whether it's you know 30-somethings or whether it's kids, and a social interactive environment. And that's what we're trying to do is bring back pinball, bring back that environment where you can come with your parents or friends, whatever, and play those games with each other or against each other, whatever, and get that social interaction. You can't get sitting on your living room couch playing Xbox. Uh, we just think that kids are just overloaded and they're going to kind of crave that, uh, that tactile interaction that, they, that we used to have when we were kids. Pinballs is a great place for kids. For some, it may be the first real arcade they ever see. It's also a great place to bring a date. It's incredibly affordable, and until the planned expansion of Mickey's Replay Cafe, Pinballs is BYOB with rules. You can call for details. 
So if you're in the mood for some old school gaming and social interaction, head down to Pinballs on Research Boulevard and score yourself some fun.